Have you ever been in a meeting or conversation where someone said something like this? To move the needle on our project, we first need a clear plan. Let's touch base tomorrow to share ideas. After that, we'll circle back to our main goals and see what's working. What? What does that mean? Idioms can be so difficult. And in this video, I'm going to show you my favorite tool that will help you understand how to use ChatGPT for idioms so you can communicate more confidently at work. Maybe you have meetings with native English speakers and they use business idioms and, and make you feel so confused. If you're only talking with other non-native speakers of English at work, you don't have to be worried about idioms. It's really only native English speakers that usually use idioms in their business communication. And they're a big part of the native language. But you don't have to use them <laughs> to communicate with native speakers. You do have to understand them sometimes, but not use them. The bad news is there's about... <laughs> 25,000 idiomatic expressions in the English language. This includes both idioms and phrasal verbs. And learning general English would have you trying to know as many of these phrases as possible. However, if you can understand some of these idioms that apply to your business life, you'll find great benefits. Keep in mind that idioms only have one meaning. Idioms are very specific. And usually they originally came from an activity or story in a culture. In American business English, there are many sports related idioms. And they're very confusing. Because most people outside of the US don't know these sports. It makes learning many of these idioms even more difficult when you need to try to understand the sport that's related to the idiom. Many people ask me if they need to learn idioms. Well, the short answer is no. You could live a happy life without ever using idioms. However, to communicate at a high level, you'll want to try to understand many common business English idioms if you're working with native English speakers. And each country has their own favorite idioms. And in this case, I'm going to talk about American business English idioms. Lots of people try to find lists of business English idioms and memorize them, but it really doesn't work this way. I'm going to show you a way with ChatGPT that works better. And becoming confident in understanding idioms can really take years. But my advice to you is to be patient and be curious. Again, let's look at this sentence. To move the needle on our project, we first need a clear plan. Let's touch base tomorrow to share ideas. After that, we'll circle back to our main goals and see what's working. There are three idioms in this sentence, to move the needle, touch base, and circle back. And as I said earlier, idioms are not logical. They're so confusing. As an example, if idioms were logical, many people might think that moving the needle would be the actual movement of a needle. Thinking of a physical needle, like a sewing needle, and they might imagine the actual movement of this needle from one place to another. Well, that's not what moving the needle means. Or touching base could be checking how strong or solid something is. Thinking of base as the bottom or foundation of an object, like the bottom up here. How touching base. And but that's not what touching base is. <laughs> or to circle back. 
maybe physically walking backwards in a circle many times and circling back. But again, that would be logical and that's not what these idioms are. So let me show you how you can use chat GPT for idioms. And I really believe it's the best tool for learning business English, including idioms. I'm going to walk you through step-by-step step how to best use chat GPT for idioms. First, you want to explain to chat GPT who you are and what you're trying to do. So I've written a good prompt that you can use. I'm going to put it into chat GPT. You can also find this prompt down below in the description of the video. So if we read through this, it says chat, I'm from Germany and you would put in whatever country you are from. English is not my first language. And today I'm not confident in English. I want your help in understanding American idioms. I'm an accountant. And again, you'd put in whatever you are. And I would like you to explain the idiom in a way that I can understand in my work. Please give me the following, a definition of the idiom, the origin of the idiom, and three example sentences using the idiom that relate to my work. And please remember, Chet, I'm not confident in English, and I want you to use very simple English in your response. Do you understand, Chet? Are you ready for the first idiom? Let's see what we get back. So Chad, of course, says, I understand your requests and I'll do my best to explain everything in simple English. I'm ready for the first idiom, whenever I am. Okay, so the first idiom was to move the needle. Let's put that in and see what we get back. So immediately, chat gives us to move the needle. And the definition is this idiom means to make a noticeable difference or improvement in a situation. It doesn't mean moving the needle. The origin is the phrase move the needle originally comes from the world of measurements and instruments, like a speedometer or a gauge in your car where the needle points to a number that shows how much, how fast, etc. And when you see the needle move, it means there's a change. In business, it means doing something that brings a real measurable change. And then Chad gives us some example sentences. The first one is in accounting. We need to find more efficient ways to process invoices. The new software should move the needle on our monthly closing times. Make it better. The second sentence deals with in a meeting. Our goal this quarter is to increase revenue. Even small cost saving measures could help move the needle toward that goal. And in the third sentence, it deals with in a performance review. Your efforts in optimizing the budget have really moved the needle on our department's financial health. Great job. So here are three really good sentences using move the needle, how we can improve something by a significant amount. Let's continue and try to find the other to idioms that were used in the sentence that I gave you originally. So in our next prompt or instructions to chat, I am gonna put in the following. And let's put this in where it says, thank you, chat. Chat likes when you're polite, you get better responses. Thank you, chat. And can you do the same for the idiom touch base? Please use simple English and explain it to me as an accountant. It really helps to continue to give chat the same instructions and you get much better responses. Let's see what chat comes back with. So immediately, 
Chat says, okay, the definition of touch base means to briefly contact or check in with someone to update or discuss something. That's what touch base is. Let me call you next week and talk about this. And the origin comes from the sport of baseball, of course, right? Always some sport related origin for so many of these idioms where players must touch each of the bases in order to score in a broader sense or a wider sense. Touching base has come to mean making sure you're in contact with someone, sort of like confirming your position or your progress. And here are the example sentences. The first one is in email communication. I'll touch base with the client next week to see if they have any more questions about the financial report. There's a very clear sentence for you. In the second one, it's in team meetings. Let's touch base at the end of each day to make sure we're on track with the audit schedule. We're on track. <laughs> it had to use another idiom in there, but it means you're on schedule, going down the right path, the right road. And in the third sentence, it deals with in project planning. Can you touch base with the IT department? We need their input on the new accounting software before we make a decision. And chat goes on to say this idiom is all about making sure communication is ongoing, which is key in any business, including accounting. Now, let's go through and, and talk about the third idiom that was part of this crazy sentence that I gave you originally. So again, I'm gonna put this in for our third sentence. Thank you, chat. And how about circle back, which was the third idiom and follow the same instructions. Chat comes back with circle back. The definition of circle back means to return to a topic a task or a conversation at a later time to discuss it further or make decisions. I really like this idiom. The origin of circle back means the idea behind circle back is similar to physically walking back in a circle, so similar, and returning to the same spot where you started. In conversations or projects, it means coming back to a point or issue after some time or after other things have been addressed. So it's not physically going backwards, but it's kind of like going back in time and circling back with someone. Again, we've got three sentences. In planning, it's this sentence. After we have all the data from this quarter, we'll circle back to discuss the budget adjustments needed. In the second sentence, it deals with in-team collaboration. Let's circle back to the issue of expense reports next week when we have more information. You can talk about it more. And in meetings, oh, we don't have time to cover this topic fully today, so we'll circle back to it in our next meeting. We'll go back to this topic and discuss it again. Chat goes on to say this phrase is useful in accounting and business when you need to pause on a specific topic and revisit it later. To revisit is to look at it again later, possibly with more information or after other priorities have been handled. And if chat gives too complex English to you, you just have to type in, can you please say that again in more simple English and explain it to me? And you'll get a response that's quite good and works out very well. Now let's put the original communication in that had these three idioms in there. So let me paste that in and say, now, can you help me understand this communication that uses these three idioms? And the original words were to move the needle on our project. We first need a clear plan. Let's touch base tomorrow to share ideas. After that, we'll circle back to our main goals and see what's working. Now we have a pretty good idea what this means, but chat can really help us here. And chat says, of course, this communication is talking about making progress, checking in 
and revisiting goals in a project. Let's break it down. Again, chat's using more complicated English than maybe what you want to revisit a goal is to look at a goal again. Let's break it down means let's look at it in more detail. So first, to move the needle on our project, we first need a clear plan. Well, this means to make significant progress or improvement in the project, it's important to start with a clear and detailed plan. Next, let's touch base tomorrow to share ideas. And as chat says, this suggests planning a brief meeting or discussion for tomorrow to update each other and discuss new ideas that could help the project. And finally, after that, we'll circle back to our main goals and see what's working. And this means that after sharing ideas and possibly implementing some of them, the next step will be to review the main objectives of the project again, then evaluate which actions or changes have been effective or made a difference. And chat tries to summarize in simple terms and says, the communication is saying, to improve our project significantly, we need to start with a detailed plan. Tomorrow, let's quickly discuss and update each other on our thoughts and ideas. Following that, we'll review our main objectives again to identify which of the new ideas or changes are helping us achieve our goals. And when you put it that way, this, these crazy sentences using all these idioms starts to make sense. And this is how you can use chat GPT for idioms. By explaining who you are, where you're from, what you're trying to do, having that background really helps. So I encourage you, whether it's chat GPT or it could be any of the other chat bots that are out there, put that in originally and then tell chat, my English, I'm not confident in it. So please keep things simple. And then ask chat to give you definitions and example sentences using these idioms and putting them into context that you can really understand and use. And then I want you to say all of this out loud. The more that you can say this out loud and really feel it, that's part of deep learning and making sure that these idioms become part of something that you can really feel and understand, not just memorize. If you want to take it a step further, I challenge you to make your own sentences using each of these idioms. In fact, you can put your own sentence in the comments below. I'm sure others would love to see what sentences you came up with. Not chat GPT sentences, your sentences. Do your best. Don't, don't worry about making mistakes. Just see what you can do. Put them in. Just try. That's the important part. All right. And then what you can do is put them into chat GPT and check and say, chat, I'm trying to use this idiom. How is this sentence? Can you help me? Give me some feedback on it. And that's the best way to really use chat GPT. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share your comments. And I also invite you to learn your business English confidence score. You'll find the link in the description below this video.